to this stage. Now you think I'm gonna tell her not to sing and shout no more? No way. Amen. Would y'all help me by putting your hands together with Miss Lebel Johnson? Not all over do. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll see if we can do this. Thank you so much, George. This is wonderful. I really appreciate the opportunity to say a few words about the music of Sister Lee Bell Johnson. And I'm honored to be presenting her with an award recognizing her decades of service and contribution to Alabama's great gospel singing heritage. I hope you all bear with me and don't mind that I'm reading something. I don't want to forget anything. I've been looking forward to an opportunity to say some things about Miss Johnson, tell you some things maybe you don't know about her. Uh, my name is Doug Serov, and I've been coming down to Alabama from my home in near Nashville, Tennessee, to attend gospel anniversary programs and other singing events for 40 years now, a little more than 40 years. And uh, George and I have known each other almost that long. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and I think he deserves great praise for his perseverance and the good, effective work of the American Gospel Quartet Convention. I trust you all enjoyed I Walk Wings. I know you did. It's sung by our honoree, Sister Johnson. She recorded that in 1994. And if you hadn't heard her sing, <laughs> oh, if you hadn't heard her sing before, now you know why music lovers in Bessemer sometimes introduce her as our Mahalia. Mm -hmm. Sister Lee Bell told me the only time she doesn't sing is when she's asleep. <laughs> she said she's been that way since she was a small child. She learned spirituals and gospel songs from her mother, who sang at home and in the cotton fields of Marengo County, Alabama. Miss Lee Bell picked cotton and sang along with her mother long before she reached school age. But if spiritual singing was an important factor in Lee, Sister Lee Bell's early life, so was deprivation and housing insecurity. Her family had to move often from one plantation to another. They experienced the worst forms of racial cruelty. Some of you know that Miss Lee Bell's father was murdered while in the custody of the Thomasville, Alabama Sheriff in December 1953. She doesn't try to put these terrible episodes out of her mind or forget them. She accepts God's will. She owns all her experiences and sees them as part, a crucial part of her life history and her identity. Singing is what made Sister Lee Bell's most difficult trials bearable. God chose to relieve her pain and sorrow through the power of her incredible voice. Her deepest joy is praising him in song. She once told me, it's a quote, it's a good life to live. It has been for me. I've had problems in my life, but they didn't have nothing to do with my singing. The Lord just let me do it for him. Sister Lee Bell is a gentle soul, content in herself, quick to laugh, but not someone to trifle with. <laughs> <laughs> Around Lee Bell Johnson, you have to be real. She's an independent-minded woman and can't be turned around from her Christian faith and values. I'm thankful that the American Gospel Quartet Convention doesn't forget the labor of faithful singers like Sister Lee Bell. She is the last surviving member of the Good Samaritan Gospel Singers of Pessimism, who celebrated their 42nd and final anniversary at Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Pessimism, where Reverend William E. Scott is pastor on last November 17th. 
The group was organized in Sweetwater, Alabama in 1977 by Sister Johnson and Sister Mamie Benefield. The other members were Emma Jean Little and Jenny Lee Harris. Later came Rochelle Benefield, Celestine Pettis, and Curtis Johnson, Jr. They recorded one 45 RPM record and three cassettes, appeared at Birmingham City Stages Festival, and made singing trips to nearby states, but they mostly sang around Birmingham and Bessemer. The city of Bessemer holds a special place in the history of gospel music, and to this day, Bessemer's gospel music lovers enthusiastically support the old-time singing, even though it seems to have passed from the scene almost everywhere else. Within this remarkable community, Lee Bell Johnson is recognized as a minister of a cappella singing and the old spiritual songs. In recent years, she's helped train and advise senior citizen singing groups, such as the New Pilgrim Voices and the Pioneer Gospel Singers. A few years ago, gospel musician Roderick Tompkins presented Sister Lee Bell with a plaque which read, Godmother of Quartet. <coughs> It was a fitting testimony to her importance, her importance, to Bessemer's gospel singers and their audience. Strange to say, there was a time when Miss Lee Bell wasn't properly appreciated or even fairly treated by some members of her community. Gratefully, all that has changed. Her steadfast character and stature as a keeper of the singing tradition has drawn many people to her. In 1994, her beautiful rendition of Stand By Me was broadcast over national public radio and was later featured on a CD produced by the Smithsonian Institution, our national museum in Washington, D.C. And yet, it's a mystery, it remains a mystery, how a musician of such extraordinary talent had so few professional opportunities and such limited exposure beyond her local community. It's altogether proper that the 2020 American Gospel Quartet Convention acknowledge Sister Lee Bell Johnson's remarkable talents and achievements, giving her the respect that she's always been due. She has been blessed to sing on into her 85th year, and as you will soon hear, she's not finished singing yet. <laughs> I'm so glad to have the honor of presenting the great gospel souls, Sister Lee Bell Johnson with the Alabama Treasure Award. <laughs> And I'm 
welcome. Count your blessings. Count them one by one. Until you hear the master say, Child, well done. Well done. Just say, Well done. When you hear the master say, Well done. Yeah. Well, 